Hey guys, I uh, hope you've had a good week so far. Uh, the first set of videos I had you guys watch really concentrate on the build-up of the Cold War and, and how that all went down uh, between Truman and Stalin. Um, this set of videos is going to really talk about the Cold War uh, heating up. Okay, so kind of pun intended there guys uh, where things are going to really get ratcheted up and and uh, people are going to be very unnerved they're going to be very fearful of atomic war okay so people are going to build fallout shelters um, you know these little bunkers basically that their families could go down in uh, you know if they thought nuclear war was imminent okay um, you know school children they would drill duck and cover so they'd have them practice getting on their desk and, and uh, covering up in case there was a nuclear debt debt <clears throat> sorry nuclear detonation which is obviously sounds um, really silly now right but uh, it just depends on how far you were from the blast but that's uh, that was the attitude of uh, the United States at that time was we could face nuclear war the Soviets have a nuclear bomb now uh, just like we do, and so you know we're kind of at odds with the Soviets. This is a, a real possibility, and so it's it pretty frightening times, for sure. Um, but basically, guys, you know, really, you kind of have a development. Eisenhower is going to come in and take the office of the president. Um, you know, the old World War II war hero, and. Really, during that time, you have two kind of key moments in, in his presidency. Um, one is the Suez Crisis, so you have the British and um, the Israelis. They are they went in and, and took control, basically nationalized the Suez Canal. So here's Egypt right here, guys. Here's the Suez Canal. It connects the Mediterranean to the Red Sea. We talked about this a little bit last year, um, but basically went in and took control of that uh, to secure trade uh, through the Suez Canal and so uh, obviously the Egyptians the Arab world not happy about this uh, and who can they turn to you know the Jews are supported by the United States uh, Britain is an ally of the United States and so Russia the Soviets basically make overtures to to Egypt saying hey we got your back we'll look out for you um, and so now you're potentially you know have a threat of war between you know Russia sending in troops into Egypt to get uh, the Jews and, and British out of Egypt and and uh, uh, take control of uh, the Suez Canal again okay and so obviously uh, the United States is not happy about that because this is giving an opportunity to the Soviets to come in into the Middle East to get their paws in on the Middle East um, and you know try and spread communism there. So I hope you guys kind of get the idea that that was a big thing for for the United States, right? You have Truman Doctrine uh, was talked about in the last couple of videos where um, you know. We are trying to contain it's the policy of containment, contain communism, um, don't let it spread to other parts of the world, uh, and then you know we're really going to continue that forward with with Eisenhower, where he's saying I can't let this happen. Um, we don't want a domino. You know, basically have the domino theory. We don't want a domino effect. Okay, meaning you know. When one domino, when you lay dominoes, I don't know if any of you have done this before, but you stack dominoes right next to each other and you make a pattern or whatever, you knock the first one down, then, well, when you knock one down, all the other dominoes fall, right? They just keep knocking each other down. Boom, 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 boom. Um, so the idea was don't let the not first domino fall, okay? Uh, and so they did not want the Soviets in the Middle East. They did not want them to be able to kind of influence the Middle East and make that a sphere of influence for themselves. And so Eisenhower is actually going to um, really, you know, hammer the British and the Israelis and say, you know, what the heck are you doing? You know, get out of there. Um, 
Now, when the Soviets threatened uh, to move in, Eisenhower was willing to say, um, hey, hey, you better back off, okay? Um, or you are going to have to face the consequences. So that's why it's known as the Suez Crisis, because you had potentially World War III breaking out right there over the Suez Canal. Um, also, during his, his tenure, something that he, I'm sure, uh, doesn't look fondly or wouldn't have looked fondly back on, obviously he's passed away now, um, is the U-2 spy plane uh, situation. So we had these spy planes guys flying very, very high up in the air, uh, these U-2 planes, and we were running missions over Russia, over the Soviet Union, um, trying to gain intel on the Soviets and, and all that. And uh, you have this guy, Francis Gary Powers. He's the uh, pilot of this U-2 spy plane that took off from Turkey. And the Soviets, uh, you know, at the time they thought, okay, we're it's flying so high that um, it can't be shot down. The Soviets shot it down. Uh, and so the Soviets shot it down and he survived. And so now the Soviets are parading this around. Hey, look at the Americans. They're um, look at what they're trying to do to us. They're they're scared of us. They um, are, you know have bad intentions basically. And so it was a real black eye for the United States. And it was it was quite an ordeal to try and get him the negotiations to get him freed. But um, we're not the only ones. The Soviets had plenty of spies. You know they talked about the Rosenbergs and all that. Uh, in that last set of videos you guys watched and so uh, basically it was okay you know we're gonna trade spy for spy basically um, also during this set of videos guys it's gonna talk a lot about uh, the Cuban Revolution uh, you know Cuba is just 90 miles from Florida so very very close in our back backyard and this guy um, you know, is leading this revolution to overthrow the Cuban government, and lo and behold, he's communist, right? And so people are, oh, that's not good. And to boot, um, the Soviets are in touch with him. He is uh, definitely dealing with the Soviets. He is cooperating with the Soviets in the Kremlin, uh, which is kind of their intelligence center right CIA Langley is ours um, theirs was the Kremlin KGB uh, and so uh, that's obviously a concern um, and basically guys we don't want you know a communist country 90 miles from the United States uh, we we're concerned about that uh, Kennedy takes office and he green lights an operation that they'd already been putting together uh, called, you know, well, which will become known as the Bay of Pigs operation. So basically, you have this little bay um, in Cuba where Cuban nationalists, they had been, they're exiles, Cuban exiles, so they'd left Cuba when the communists took over. They want their, take their country back. They want to, um, get rid of the communists and live in a free Cuba again. And so the CIA was training these Cuban nationalists as soldiers and they helped them land on Cuba at the Bay of Pigs and try and uh, start a revolution and, and overthrow um, the communist government in Cuba. Okay, of you know Fidel Castro. And so <clears throat> this is just a total um, botched effort um, so they fought bravely but they were overwhelmed uh, the Cuban Air Force played a big factor in it uh, which JFK he was criticized um, he didn't want people to know that this was um, backed by the United States and so he refused to give those troops those Cuban nationalists those Cuban exiles uh, those troops the the air cover they needed against the Cuban Air Force and so they were pinned down on the beaches, and they were getting hammered by the Cuban Air Force, and it was it was game over. Okay, and so that is a black eye. Obviously, you know, it's pretty easy to draw connections to the U.S. helping them, even though um, Kennedy was trying to keep that secret. 
Uh, so it's a black eye for the U.S. And it obviously enraged Fidel Castro and, and made him hate the United States even more uh, as well. Okay, and just kind of pushed him into the arms of the Soviets even more. And so obviously that's a concern. Uh, and so that's going to give rise to what is known as the Cuban, miss Cuban Missile Crisis, perhaps the most um, worrisome time in the Cold War, guys. You know, the closest we came to nuclear war with, with uh, the Soviets, guys. So basically, uh, you know, Castro, he had bomb silos um, built, uh, nuclear missile silos built in Cuba, a uh, U-2 spy plane had photographed these silos, and they, you know, the analysts went, "Oh, shoot! This is a silo for a missile." Uh, and so we were able to figure out, okay, the Soviets have not uh, shipped the nuclear exploders yet. Which obviously, if it's if they don't have the nuclear exploders on there, then you can't really use it um, as a nuclear weapon, a nuclear device against the U.S. Um, so they're not nuclear yet. They're not um, worrisome. They're not worried about these missiles yet without the exploders. And the Soviets are sending uh, these exploders by ship to Cuba. Um, <clears throat> and so President Kennedy orders a blockade of Cuba to make sure that those nuclear exploders don't get to uh, Cuba. And, you know, that obviously is going to put us in a, a, a peculiar situation because what happens when these Soviet ships, obviously they have um, protection from Soviet warships, what happens when these Soviet ships uh, reach the blockade? Are they going to stop? Are they going to continue on to Cuba and our ships are going to fire on their forces? Uh, are they going to attack our forces to get through to get through the blockade into Cuba? Uh, so those are all questions and, and basically, okay, is anything like that going to escalate to nuclear war? Uh, and so that is very, very concerning, obviously, for the American people, uh, hence why we call it the Cuban Missile Crisis. And so finally, guys, um, Kennedy and, you know, Stalin's been dead by now, so it's Nikita Khrushchev uh, is the leader of, is the premier, the leader of, of the Soviet Union. Um, they finally uh, work something out. The explosions are not delivered to Cuba, uh, and we've averted this, this crisis. Okay. Um, so we were able to dodge a bullet on that one for sure, but there's a lot of concern that this was going to lead to nuclear warfare. Um and the last thing I want to talk about, guys, is they also are going to reference the space race on this video. And the space race is, you know, spurred on by Sputnik. The Russians putting in that satellite into space and everybody concerned, okay, it's a spy satellite. They have nuclear missiles on that thing. No, no, it wasn't. But uh, it also was concerning because they had the capabilities to launch something up into space. Then they probably have the capabilities to launch a missile. A nuclear missile at the United States. So that was the other concern, but basically that's what spurred on this idea of the space race, that, hey, we're going to beat the Russians to the moon. That was the big objective. Um, you know, Kennedy declaring, hey, we are going to get to the moon before the decade is up. Uh, we choose to go to the moon not because it is, it is easy, but because it is hard. That's part of his famous speech. Um, and this really becomes you know, a microcosm of our, of the Cold War, of our rivalry with the Soviet Union and of, hey, we're going to beat you to uh, the moon. We're going to beat you in, in space travel. Okay. You know, we're, we're rivals in that as well. Uh, and this was big guys for us because this really fueled a lot of innovation and development in the technology sphere. Okay. Um, so, you know, microchips and all that guys. Um, a lot of that was in demand for these rocket systems and, and all the things that it took to put a man into space safely and, and get him to the moon and bring them back safely again. Uh, you had to have the technology and the American government, the United States government was willing to spend big dollars to get that technology. And so uh, people were able to um, 
put in the time and money to develop those technologies. And a lot 